hello everybody, it's your boy Prof Chalf, and we're back again with another video. This is I visited Bulgaria, so you don't have to. I live in Bulgaria, I was born here, so let's see why people shouldn't visit. Hey bro, it's nice here, it's not that bad, I promise. Let's where go. am I? You don't know where you are? Where are no. you? You're in Bulgaria. Hey, you... <laughs> <laughs> what is not that bad? No! Bro, it's not that bad, though. <laughs> Authentic music. Hey, the cock. Yeah. That's Bulgaria. Yep, old style Welcome architecture. Welcome to Bulgaria. Are you more... Is this how we started the video? You're not funny, brother. You're not funny. Chill the fuck out. Okay. No, not that Bulgaria. This Bulgaria. The it actual Bulgaria. Its vast history, roses, yogurt, yeah. and internet national. 681, brother. Who have a With some pauses in between and now. And even the slightest mention oh, of this God. country. <laughs> hey, listen, it's. Okay, it's still pretty bad, but it's not that bad anymore. It's not. It's complicated. It's complicated. It is located I don't know what the, the hell that Balkans, is. Balkans bordering five other countries. Yep. Romania to the north, Serbia and North Macedonia to yep. the west, and Greece, Greece and Turkey to its south. With all of whom it has the absolute best of relations. <laughs> First off, it's not that bad anymore. To be honest, the only country we don't really have good relationship, and that's mostly political, is North Macedonia. The rest we who? Cool. Brother, we homies. Like, I know people go to Greece, go to Turkey all the time, go to Romania, we listen to Romanian music. Brother, we are cool. People go to Serbia for food. The country has a population hey, good of now. around 6.8 million, yeah, which has been on a faster declining slope yeah. than Gen Z's mental health. It's, it's bad, a brother. Mental breakdown. GSM, 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 GSM. Sure that one. As the country loses <laughs> around 50,000 people. Yeah. In 10 years, we're supposed to go down to like 6, 5 million. It's bad, brother. Annually, despite being a small nation, mm. Bulgaria's history is anything but, seeing hey. that Bulgaria is old as shit. The earliest yes. evidence of hominids existing here date back to 1.4 million years ago. In the town of Stara okay, that's Zagora, old. some of Stara the Zagora. oldest man-made structures yep. ever found can be found dating to 6,000 BC. Hey. The oldest known old Bulgarians, old Jack. Just like new Bulgarians, mostly Jack. <laughs> town in Europe, Solnitsata, established over 6,000 years ago, also calls this country home. By 800 BC, most of Bulgaria was under the Thracian state. The Thracians Race. were a mysterious group of people whose origin and cultural practices are still largely unknown, are they? despite their outsized cultural footprint. Either hmm. way, despite the tribe's disunity, lack of any sort of proper script, and preference to... <laughs> tribe's disunity. Yeah, that would... That would continue in history. There's a lot of disunity going on in the Balkans. <laughs> Rural living over commie blocks, unlike today's Bulgarians, they greatly influence and intermingle with in the Greeks block. and Romans. However, due to its geographic position, the country was left wide open to more simultaneous attacks and invasions on multiple fronts than a Hungarian Tsar. Okay, kiss my joke. Crop talk. As the Persians, hey, Celts, yo. ancient Macedonians, Romans, Damn. Goths, Huns. Damn, why you do the ancient Macedonians like that? God's looking cute though. And perhaps most crucially, the South Slavs invaded Bulgaria. The South Slavs assimilated with local Thracians and peacefully enjoyed their farms and rural lifestyles mm. until the 6th century, when the yeah. arrival of the Bulgars, a semi-nomadic Turkic tribe originally yeah. from Central Asia, turned the entire place okay. upside down. Here there's like... Yeah, let's not get into it. This is a this is history. Early history is kind of complicated here. Um, there's a lot of the maybe Bulgarian Empire. I guess unlike most overlords, not really. Rather than impose their language and culture, the Bulgars quickly adopted the language and culture yeah, of the Slavs, decent. which then made Bulgaria the spiritual, economic, and cultural home of the South Slavic tribes. In the middle of the 9th century, Bulgaria converted to Christianity as yeah. Tsar Boris became baptized. The big boy. Soon after, under his Important orders, boy. the Cyrillic <laughs> alphabet was born and spread across his realm. Yeah, buddy. Bulgaria remained a dominant powerhouse. In yeah, that's pretty much Bulgarian history. Big, small, big, small. Disappear, come back. Big, small, small, smaller. 
sadness. The region up until the 14th century, when the Ottomans succeeded in making Bulgaria their vassal yeah. state. They are too OP, brother. What the fuck? God damn. Just Nerf them, motherfuckers. Did you? <laughs> Under them, Bulgarians suffered brutal oppression yeah, and suppression for the next 500 years until the April Uprising 1876, Let's when go. Bulgaria, with the help of Russia, won its independence. This, however, wasn't the end of Turkish influence in Bulgaria, despite the fact that very little Ottoman architecture or even mosques hey, still exist. There is a in my town. There is a Turkish bath that we have. In modern That's Bulgaria, there is still a there. good half a million Bulgarians of Turkish descent forming nearly 10% of the country's population and forming its largest ethnic minority. Mm. After the brutal Ottoman ass-kicking in 1878, the Treaty of St. Oh, we're going through the history. After that, pretty much nothing good happens to Bulgaria. It is just bad, bad and worse. It's mostly our own fault. Stefano created a greater Bulgarian state, mm. which included large territories of Thrace so and cute. Macedonia. The Western powers, so worried that Russia was using this as an opportunity to increase its influence in the Balkans, stepped in and redid the borders. Yeah, redid the borders. They fucked us in the asshole. No loop. Separating them from their <laughs> precious Macedonia. In the beginning of the 20th century, Bulgaria, still pissed off at the Ottomans, joined in with Greece, Serbia, and Montenegro to kick the Ottomans' ass. I'm a little bit scared because, man, you are big and you have eggs. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, that was not Bulgarian, but he said he fucked his mom. Okay. Uh, I don't know, am I, am I in danger? However, yes, you are, Bulgaria brother. may have let the victory get to its head. A little bit. We did some. Listen, what happens after this, it does not reflect who we are as people. It does not reflect. It was the Germans' fault, okay? We had a German at helm. Okay, I blame the Germans for absolutely everything. Through the whole history, the whole humankind, even before Germany, okay? Had and blame the being Germans. pissed at not receiving more I spoils of war, specifically Macedonia, decided to declare war on its previous allies. Okay, so the, the deal with Macedonia is that everybody wanted Macedonia. Okay, that's why we didn't get Macedonia, because everybody wanted Macedonia. Greece, Serbia, and Montenegro, which and then, then Romania ended up in, in Bulgaria getting an ass kicking Wait, of a lifetime. Okay, it was with even time. Romania joining oh, yeah. in on Never the mind. front, and Bulgaria remember. relinquishing territory. It was bad. We went 1v4, 5, whatever the fuck. We got our ass whooped. I mean, realistically. Several years later, despite it over getting its ass kicked, Bulgaria declared war on Serbia as the country was getting double penetrated by the German Dream Team. While there were victories and some land acquired, and Bulgaria was able to hold its precious Macedonia in I'll their say hands it like that. once more, the victory was fleeting, and once the war ended, they had to give Macedonia back. Germany knew that dangling the morsel of the return of southern Dabruja from Romania was a winning bet, oh and Bulgaria, God. having not yet learned a single lesson on the dangers none le none, of none. territorial greediness, signed the Tripartite Pact in 1941, and once more decided to invade Yugoslavia in an effort to once more retake Macedonia. Hey, things were going well for a second, okay? For one split second, things were going well. Just stop! No! Just stop! No! Stop! No! Just stop it! This ended up precisely as you imagined. Yeah. <laughs> Nevertheless, the country was able to rid itself of its teenage <laughs> angst oh in 1990. But to be honest, after the Second World War, we were pretty much the only country that is on the losing side and one territory. We went, we got Dobruja. A little bit. 90, and then joined the EU in 2007. Hey, no matter what anybody says, best decision we've ever made politically. Straight up. Only smart decision we've made politically, maybe in the last 30 years. Plus. But to truly understand the country and its history, there is no better way oh than to God. visit the country itself. But before that, I just dropped some merch. We got four oh. hella dope designs of your favorite countries, Romania, Hungary, Serbia, and Elizabeth herself. How about and we got more coming soon. God damn so it. go to theironicshop.com and get your own unironic drip today. The so ironic to start shop. off our journey, we're going to head on to Bulgaria's Black Sea hey. coast. And then going to Varda. Good choice, brother. I prefer Burgas, but to the city cool. of Varna. The 
Bulgarian music. And you get to experience my culture, Varna, God damn it. known today as the country's third largest city, has been an important one? cultural and economic center for nearly 3,000 years. Some of the oldest gold treasure in the world damn. was found near the city. Varna is also famous. Yeah, don't ask where that gold is nowadays, okay? Don't ask about the gold nowadays. <laughs> oh my god. Famous for the Battle so of Varna. Fucked. Where Ladislaus III of Poland's army of about 30,000 crusaders was defeated by the larger Ottoman force of 60,000 mm. led by Sultan Mur II. Ladislaus <laughs> was killed and this failure all but guaranteed the fall of Constantinople in 1453 to the Ottomans. And thus Bulgaria was doomed to another four centuries of Ottoman rule. Oh, also for seven years in 1949, Joseph Stalin renamed to just Stalin for whatever reason when it comes to what to the modern day city itself it harbors a population what? of 335,000 inhabitants and Damn. serves as bulgaria's most important port and vacation destination to many with numerous resorts and commercial yeah, districts it's a cool place throughout the beach the city. is nice walking down the coast you can find pristine sandy beaches with hardly any people making this place Perfect with, for any beach lover. With hardly any people. It is a decent amount of people in summer, what do you mean? Up until the late 19th century, Varna was still an Ottoman city, mostly made up of wooden buildings and houses. After its independence, many of these buildings were torn down and replaced with neo-renaissance, neo-baroque, neo-classic and art nouveau buildings. Alongside, yeah, of course, pretty nice. uh, comic blocks. Goddamn comic blocks, brother. Thus, even though it's an ancient city, very few of its old buildings remain. One of the ones remaining, however- Oh, in my town there is an ancient, like, wall building. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's also destroyed up. Yes, it's absolutely- there's pretty much no wall left, but... It's cool. However, is the Cathedral of the Assumption. Today, the second largest Assumption. place of Christian worship within Bulgaria, the cathedral was built in 1880 as a commemoration to all the Russian soldiers who died in the fight for the liberation of Bulgaria. The Cathedral of Assumption resembles yeah. the one in St. Petersburg as a Russian architect, Maas, used the one Mas. in Russia to inspire the large golden gnomes on top of it. Within the cathedral, you can also find numerous artisan paintings of biblical stories and saints, alongside with other holy relics. Not too far off. You can I mean, I'll, most churches in Bulgaria have those uh, paintings and stuff like that. I think it's kind of like they need to have it. Because I don't think I've been in a church that didn't have paintings and stuff like that. Even the smaller ones. Also find the Roman Thermia, aka the Roman Baths. This huge 7,000 meter squared complex was built all the way back in the second century. Although so most of it lies in ruins, it is still possible to get an idea of how the baths looked. The complex consisted of several dressing rooms and assorted hot and cold water pools. The bathing Romans took turns entering the frigid and hot waters during their visit. It is believed that's not the only thing they took turns on. <laughs> that the complex went out of service sometime during the third or fourth century due to exceeding cost and maintenance. Damn. Moving on from Varna, we head on 100 kilometers south down hey. the Black Sea coast. Personally, my favorite place to go to in the summer. In the 100 I times better Burgas. and nicer and fourth largest city in Bulgaria, <laughs> Burgas. I feel you, brother. Wait, what is that? Wait, what Coming the from bad the Latin word Burgos, meaning tower, Burgas is another warm and sunny Burgas. resort heavy beach town. Like Bro, Varna, it's- The sand there is so much better for some reason. I don't know why. They're so close to each other, but the sand is just smoother. I don't get it. Old as balls. I don't understand with three how it works. Millennia of history behind it, and like Varna, it was an important Thracian city with many ancient burial sites uncovered. During the Ottoman times, it used to be the second most important Ottoman port in the Black Sea, oh, shit, importing I didn't know and that. exporting tons of cereal and grain. However, it wasn't that big of a deal until after it was liberated from the Ottomans by Russian troops in the late 19th century. After its liberation, Oof. the city quickly became an important economic look, and industrial only look hub, look at the front of that with building. hundreds of newly constructed public buildings, like libraries, churches, factories, and printing houses, spring up throughout the town. Commies? After the Second World War, all of the factories within the city became nationalized, which over time led to Burgas's economic decline as output fell due to mismanagement. But hey, well, at least- Listen, this is a lot more complicated, okay? everyone had a house am i right <laughs> brother okay first off after the communism fell and uh, everything got nationalized 
first, before it got mashed, nice shit got stolen by everybody. So the factories were not factories anymore. It was empty buildings, okay? It was, this shit's complicated. It's not that simple. It's not that thing's <laughs> fault. Communist. God damn, I hate commies. I will be honest with you. This video is a trigger line. Many buildings and monuments, the commies. such as the regional court and the Ayusha monument, which uh, in no hey. way whatsoever has any homosexual. If you don't kiss the homie, you ain't in. You ain't doing war right, okay? Sexual elements. Absolute at all. none. Today, Burgas, That's not gay, much okay? Like Barna, Just kissing the homie. As a chill resort town on the coast. It's pretty Walking nice. through the town, you can oh. find several cute. There's also mud baths there. If you've never been to a mud bath, absolutely delightful. Shopping streets with shops dope. offering everything skin. from clothes to souvenirs and, of course, coffee and ice cream. Afterwards, yeah, you I'll can go. head to the I'll sandy I'll beach and enjoy the sea summer breeze as you enjoy a cold plate of tarator with a side of shops <laughs> salad and finish it up with some good old Bulgarian barbecue. Yeah, buddy. Pushing forward, we head into we central going? Bulgaria and the country's second largest and arguably culturally most important city. Where Plovdiv. are we going? Oh, we're going to Plovdiv. Okay. I've not been many times to Plovdiv, but... Yeah. yeah. Hey, anybody that does that, you're a piece of shit, okay? Don't get your disgusting fuck... First off, keep your feet inside your shoes, because they smell. Your feet smell, okay? That's not... You're not special. Your farts do not smell nice. You smell. Stop smelling. If there's one city that Bulgaria considers its cultural heart, it's Plovdiv. With about 350,000 people, this is oh, yet another nice city. ancient city, with evidence of its establishment Pretty much all the dating cities back are to 6,000 brother. BC. <laughs> Everything is ancient Bulgaria. the oldest continuously inhabited city in the world, Damn, older than Athens that. and Rome. In the 4th century yeah, BC, fucked, it was Adams. conquered by Philip II of Macedon, who named it Philippopolis after himself. You might know him as the father of the noted North Macedonian Alexander the Great. Apparently, the ancient Greeks knew the town as Ponerpolic, or Town of Villains, as Philip II villains. settled the town with 2,000 criminals, vagabonds, and lawyers. Oh, it's like Australia. Shit. I didn't know that. By the first century, the city was fully incorporated into the Roman Empire and became the central city of the Roman province of Thracia. Thus began the period of rapid growth, which is still obvious today, given the sheer amount of Roman ruins littered all over yeah. the city. Like the Roman Forum, the Odeon, Baths, Library, the city walls, aqueducts, basilica. <laughs> I, I, he goes to everything, everything is fucking, everything is absolutely destroyed, brother. I mean. And treasury. The most famous of the ruins, however, would have to be the ancient stadium and theater of Philippopolis. Which is not the that stadium destroyed. today can be found in the heart of modern-day Plovdiv's center. Built in the 2nd century, the stadium was one of the largest and most well-preserved buildings from the time period. At its height, it was able to seat over 30,000 spectators at full capacity. Damn. Mainly the games organized a within a stadium were of athletic character, however, seeing wrestling and boxing matches also wasn't out of the ordinary. As Plovdiv, or Philippopolis, as that? it was known at the time, was a wealthy center of trade, many of its wealthiest residents built lavish mansions meant to show off their status. And many of these are still around, with their frescoes and mosaics still intact. Outside of the myriad hey, of Roman George. ruins, the highlight of Plovdiv is its lovely old town, which contains many styles of architecture spanning thousands of years and is one of the best places in Bulgaria to see Bulgarian revival architecture. I mean, pretty much, I think almost every city has like a, a little district and area. My city has, I'm pretty, it's a pretty small one, whereas like all has buildings and you can't do shit about them. Like per law, you can't destroy them, you gotta keep them. If you have a building there, you gotta keep it like this like you can't fuck with it bulgarian revival also known as the bulgarian renaissance was a time period during ottoman occupation that spanned about a hundred years from the mid 18th to the mid 19th century during yeah. this time a bit Bulgarians late for the fed up with the ottoman suppression of their culture sought to reclaim their autonomy and self-identify their national identity through the encouragement of development of education literacy culture all based on a singular bulgarian character one of the ways this desire manifested was through a particular style of architecture known as Bulgarian Revival. While there are regional differences, this style of buildings are characterized by their large size, Wait, often with a top. Was that the, was the middle flag the flag of Plovdiv? Uh, recently, 
I don't know why, after 20 plus years, I found that the most cities in Bulgaria have their own flags. And my flag is, my city's flag is dope as hell. It's purple. Hey, we cool as hell over here. We small, but we cool. Than the first floor and the second or third levels containing long rows of windows to let in plenty of natural light, as well as allowing idle gossip with the passerbys. <laughs> Often the buildings are brightly colored and adorned with intricate carvings, decorations and paintings often the floral motif. The ceilings, doors and porches will be carved out of wood and can be very detailed. The most famous of the houses found in this area are Balabanov's house, Lamartine house, Netkovic house and many others, converted into galleries, museums and cultural centers. I, they it's look also worth though. mentioning that this place they look awesome. I wish we kept more of that. This isn't full of tourists. So upon visiting, it is very likely that you will have the entire old town to yourself. Within yeah. the old town, amongst a variety of colorful revival houses, it is also possible to find several orthodox churches, dating from the same time period and even before. Yep. Standing art. near the Hisar Kapia gate is one of those churches, the Church of St. Constine and Hel Helena. Estimated to be built sometime in the 4th century, the Church of St. Constine and Damn. Helena it's is one of the oldest churches within the city, and possibly even the country. It was named after the great Byzantine Emperor, Constantine and his mother. After the Ottomans conquered the kingdom, the church was torn down and rebuilt several times. Today's church was established in the 19th century during the Bulgarian revival, and alongside carrying the style typical for the time period, there are also several Baroque elements ordaining the church. Nearby, you can also find the Sveta Nedelja church. Originally built in the 17th century, the church was revitalized like many others within town oh, they look so the nice. area's revival. Upon its construction, she was intended to be one she of the largest revivalist churches in Plovdiv. To achieve this goal, many iconographers and painters across the country were brought in to work on the interior of the temple. <laughs> I like the, that. That horse had a wild look in his eyes. Thus, God inside, damn. the church ordained with plenty of beautiful icons and frescoes in the authentic reclaimed Bulgarian style. Yeah, country is beautiful, but... Continuing our journey across Bulgaria, we resume traveling west as we head into Bulgaria's the capital. capital and largest city, Sofia. Unsurprisingly, yep. Sofia too is a city with an... I'm gonna be honest, not the biggest fan. Too many people, too much shit going on over there. Well, I mean, that's normal for a capital city. Extensive history, with the first Neolithic settlements found there dating to 6000 BC. Various tribes settled there until Philip II of Macedonia destroyed the town in the 4th century BC. The Romans called it Serdica after the Celtic Serdi tribe that previously inhabited it, and it was the administrative center of the region during Roman times, with two emperors <laughs> born there. It the Rat Palace it was so important God to the Romans that Constantine the Great even considered making it the capital of the Byzantine Empire. No, rather I did than not know that. Alongside what? that, it was also an important center for Christianity, since it was one of the first Roman cities where Christianity was honored as an official religion. And Emperor Galerius issued the Edict of Toleration Galerius. in 311, which ended the persecution of Christianity. After Serdica joined the First Bulgarian Empire, it was known as the Serdets and fell to the Byzantine Empire in the 11th century, until it was incorporated into yeah, we're getting so much history, the Second Bulgarian Empire, I was expecting where more it grew memes. to be the most important city in the empire, where the rulers of Sofia, known as the Sebastokrator, was second in power to only the Tsar of Bulgaria. In the 14th century, it was renamed Sofia after the Church of Saint Sophia. Shortly after this, it was conquered by the Ottoman Empire, and until the defeat of the Ottomans in 1878, Muslims significantly outnumbered Bulgarian Orthodox Christians. Damn. After the war, the vast majority of Muslims left before it was even cool. Nearly all evidence of this population, Life. however, such as mosques, <laughs> have been destroyed and very little Ottoman architecture remains today. Yeah. Yet still some People were not happy about the long Ottoman rule at all. Not at all. Like the centrally located Banyabashi Mosque. Originally constructed in the mid 16th century, the Banyabashi Mosque has been a loyal servant of Sofia's Turkish community. Although it might look like a regular mosque, the house of worship was constructed over natural thermal spas. Oh, it is shit. even possible to see steam rising out of the vents from the ground by the mosque's walls. This gave the mosque its name, Banya Bashi, which in Turkish means head bath. Across the mosque, you can also find the Sofia Banyan Synagogue, Bulgarian, so. also known as the largest synagogue in the Balkans, Maybe it's and the that. third largest in Europe. 
After the Spanish Inquisition, many Jews resettled in the Ottoman Empire and by extent in Sofia. Thus, to meet the demand for the city's We're significant so Jewish population, Damn. Sophia opened up the synagogue in the early 20th century. Jesus. It is also worth mentioning that during World War II, Bulgaria, although implementing several anti-Semitic oh. policies, refused to deport its Jewish population as Yeah, we, we, one of the small good things we did in ordered history. by Germany. The government at the time claimed it was anti-constitutional and was able to preserve its Jews from a horrible fate. Ironically though, after the communists took over, the country deported most of its German and Russian population without beating an eye to the constitution. I mean, no one said the communists were nice people, did they? So, God you damn know. Right, yeah, get him the hell out of here, will you please? <laughs> Come on, brother. Get him out of here. Throw them out! In the same area, you can also oh find the Regional God. History Museum of Sofia. The building of this museum <laughs> is definitely one of my favorite ones due to its playful revival design. Its bright colors simply radiate light to the Jesus. mostly gray surroundings. Originally, the museum served as a mineral bathhouse until 1928, when the first permanent exhibition was established. Inside, the exhibitions covered the time period between the 6th century BC and the 20th yeah, it's century AD. The words. South of the museum, if you're like, there, definitely you gotta check it out. All these old buildings are really most dope. important landmarks. The There's Church of Sveta Nedelia. The church dates all the way back to the 10th century. However, the modern day temple was constructed in the 18th century due to the previous building sustaining significant damage over yeah. the years due to war and conflict. Within the church, the remains of Serbian King Stefan. Much the whole history of the country. Or the whole Balkans. A lot of damage from war. Panuros II Milutin can be found. The remains were taken to Bulgaria as the ruler was able to defeat the Bulgarian Emperor Mikhail Shishman in battle, because of which the church also boasted the name of Sveti Kral, meaning Holy King. In 1925, the church was almost completely destroyed as communist terrorists set off explosives during a service attended by Tsar Boris III. Although there were over 500 injured and 150 dead, the entirety of Damn. the royal family survived. Speaking of Tsars, a couple of kilometers east of Sveta Nedelia stands the famous monument to the Tsar Liberator, Russian Tsar Alexander II. Yeah. On the equestrian statue alongside the depiction of Alexander, you can also- There is a lot of uh, after war, after freedom Russian statues pretty much everywhere. We have a couple in my town, I'm pretty sure there's a couple everywhere. Like, it is so many statues. Find several Russian and Bulgarian soldiers being led into battle by the great goddess of victory, Nike. In 1878, Nike. Bulgaria again became an independent state after nearly 500 years of Ottoman rule, yeah. as the country was freed with the help of Russia during the Tenth Russo-Turkish War. Last the but not least, we have the crown jewel of Sofia, the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral. Mm. Easily recognizable with its golden Big blue ass. domes, the cathedral was erected in 1924 in the Neo-Byzantine style. As with the previously mentioned monument, Alexander Nevsky commemorates Russia's military contribution to Bulgaria's independence. The cathedral reaches a height of 53 That's meters a lot. and is today the ninth biggest Orthodox church in the world. Thus, the church was named in Damn. honor of one of Russia's most beloved princes, Alexander Nevsky. During World War I, the name of the church was changed to the Church of Cyril and Methodius, due to the two countries being on opposite sides of the war. When it comes to the Balkans, That is the homies that make the alphabet. Balkans, Bulgaria might be one Quick of the least nations. Yet, with its rich history and cultural heritage, Bulgaria still has plenty to offer. If you're into Roman ruins, Orthodox churches and yeah. iconography, or even nature, Bulgaria has a little something for hey, everyone. We have shit. At first glance, We're Bulgaria cute. might seem a bit cindere, with it having a colder everyone. At first glance, Bulgaria might seem a bit cindere, <laughs> with it having a colder exterior if you put the effort of getting to know this country yeah and its people and it people will pay are off. like that as well it will definitely grow on you over definitely. time so i implore you to go and give this place a chance you just might be surprised with what you find yeah you might okay i don't know if i should be happy or sad that we didn't go into the communist history but that's good that's good for my nerves okay it's good for my well-being Fucking commie pieces of shit. As per usual, I wish to thank all my channel members. Okay, that we ended. Okay, well, hope y'all enjoyed this quick little intro history into Bulgaria. It's also the series. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Let me know what y'all think. Has anybody been to Bulgaria? What did you think? Like, comment, subscribe, and see y'all next time, okay? Bye, everybody. Have a good day.